Hi there, my Haddad here again. So it has been some time that I didn't do a video on my YouTube channel and that's because I was in my summer holiday. So now I'm back from my holiday so I decided to do the first video and in this video I'm going to show you how you can run EOIP over PPPoE especially for ISPs. I had uh, this question coming from one of my students and he asked me is it possible that we can run EOIP over PPPoE? Now what is EOIP? EOIP is just a tunnel interface that you created you make a tunnel and then uh, you can bridge this tunnel uh, be with uh, another customer so you have two customers you bridge the EOIP then in this case what they can do they can see each uh, itself uh, on the layer 2 so say that you have a bank which has a headquarter and the branch office and they want to uh, make uh, uh, the uh, layer 2 connectivity then what you can do you can make EOIP and then uh, in this case you provide layer 2 connectivity to your customer and this can pass over your cloud of your ISP without any issue you only need to have some uh, IP connectivity and then you can run EOIP and of course you need to have the Microtech router because EOIP is proprietary for Microtech so I decided to make this video to show you how you can do this configuration. Let's go directly and see what is the scenario. So this is my scenario. Let's assume that I do have here an ISP and this ISP is providing internet to my client one and to my client two using PPPoE. So I'm just running PPPoE. So this is the cloud that I have here. Meaning that this one will be connected to the internet. This one will be connected to the internet. What you can do actually, because those, uh, those routers that are some routers that you are providing to your customers, you have uh, full access to them. So what you can do, you can make uh, on uh, those routers EOIP tunnel. Of course, you need to have reachability to the IPs which are provided by the PPPoE on those uh, on this interface. On on this interface, you should have reachability, meaning client one can reach to that IP of client two, and client two can reach to the IP of uh, the client one. Then what you can do, you can make EOIP, you create a tunnel interface inside your cloud and then you bridge them. So you make a bridge interface and inside this bridge interface you put the EOIP interface that has been created and you put this interface which is connected to your LAN. Same you do here, you put the EOIP interface in a bridge and then you put the LAN interface in a bridge. Then at the end what we are going to have is something like a big switch big layer 2 switch then if say that this is a headquarter and that is a branch office here you can just put IP addresses here from the same range and they can ping each other without any problem so in this lab what I'm going to do I have to go through the complete configuration because I didn't do any configuration on the routers so I'm going to make the uh, uh, PPPoE server and uh, I'm going to uh, create uh, the uh, tunnels of the EOIP uh, after I have connected the uh, PPPoE clients to the internet and see if it's gonna work. So let's go directly and start with the configuration. So we go first to the uh, router which is uh, the ISP and uh, I'm gonna do the configuration of the PPPoE very fast uh, because I have already explained it in some other videos so please look at my uh, channel and then you can find out that I have already explained the, the PPPoE server in details with the lab. So how to create the PPPoE server? We just go from here. I'm gonna use this profile. I'm gonna create one uh, account to my first customer because we do have here two offices, right? We said. So that is user one, user one, and then I will create the profile default encryption. Let's say that I get this IP and he will get this IP. Of course, you can use the pool for the remote, but now it's, it's just a lab, so I don't need to make a pool. And I create another one, which is for the second customer. And uh, we make a PPPoE. That is the local address that I get on my tunnel interface. And it is that he got on his tunnel interface on the PPPoE. Then I will create uh, the PPPoE server. Now, if you look to the picture, I'm going to make it uh, uh, because as you see we have a uh, client 2 uh, and a client 1 that are connected to two different interfaces actually normally it's not like that normally it's just you have some switching here and then all your customers are connected to that switch or many switches but this is the scenario I do have now so I'm going to bridge those two interfaces and run PPPoE on this bridge interface. So Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2, I will bridge them. 
So let's do that. I will go to the bridge and I will make a bridge interface and I'll put inside of it Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. Now I will run the PPP OE, OE server on the bridge interface. So I will run here uh, on the bridge interface and I will use the default profile and then that's it. Now we have to be sure that we have a, uh, a masquerade here, rule, NAT rule masquerade to allow, this is my one connection on Internet 5. So, so far so good. So this ISP1 is done. Let's connect now the client 1 and client 2 to the PPPoE server. So this is client 1, you can see the name over here. Please look to the picture to follow. I will create a uh, PPPoE client. And then um, the PPPoE client on this one is connected to interface Ethernet 2. So we go to interface Ethernet 2. We put it here and then the dial out. I'm going to use user 1. User 1 that I have created. I want to get default route. And then I will say here, OK. You see directly it's connected. Now to be sure, let's make a ping to 8.8.8.8 to see if we have internet. So this router has internet. Very good. We go to client 2. So this is now the name client 2. Same as we have done on client 1. So I will go to the PPPoE client. Client 2, if we look, it's connected to in the interface Ethernet 1 to the ISP. So I will leave it. And then now user 2, user 2. And then I will say here, OK. And it is connected. Now if we try to ping to 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 .8, we can see it's connected to the internet. And if we look to the IP address, you can see he got, this is dot three, the other one got dot two, and the ISP should have uh, already dot one. So if we look to the ISP, there is the ISP router. Yes, okay, very good. So, so far so good. Now uh, we have made the, the normal Settings that normally, of course, if you are an ISP, you may have a radio server and uh, you configure there the users. That's possible. But now just get the idea what I'm doing because this is not the important point. Uh, what is important is to show you how you can do the EOIP over the PPOE. Very good. So now it's uh, done from uh, that side. Now, uh, before I continue doing the EOIP on client one and client two, uh, let me just show you that I have put on the LAN 1 router, on the LAN 1 router, I have put this IP address 172.16.0.1 on the interface Ethernet 1 on the LAN router. And uh, I put the same range on LAN 2. I have put the same range, which is 172.16.0.2. So at the end, those two routers need to be able to ping to each other. So now if we try, Ping to 172.16.0.1, you will see it's not possible. So after we do the UIP, this should be possible. So let's do now the configuration of the PPP of the UIP. So how to do it? We have to go to the clients, the clients router. And uh, first of all, on from client one, I want to first what is the IP on client one, which we got it from the PPP OE. It is dot two ten dot ten dot ten dot two. So we need now to ping to 10.10.10.3 to see if we can reach it. 10.10.10.3. And here we go, we can reach this. Very good. And of course, from the other side, he can reach me. So now what we need to do, we have to go to the interface and then we go to the EOIP tunnel. Again, you need to have two Microtech routers on the, the client side. So I will put the remote address is 10.10.10.3, the tunnel ID 1. This tunnel ID should be the same on both sides. So this is done from his, this side. Now we go from the second side, which is client uh, 2. Let me just go to client 2. And then uh, I will make EOIP. Let's have a look. Uh, we have to get EOIP. And then 10.10.10.2. So this is the IP we got from the PPPoE. And then tunnel ID is one. So we wait for the EOIP to be formed. So now the EOIP is being formed. So we have the tunnel wrapper running. Very good. Now what I need to do is just to make the bridging. 
So I will go to the uh, client one again. So I will bridge this EOIP interface with what? With the on the client one with the interface which is Ethernet one, which is connected to LAN one. So I will go to the bridge. I'll make a bridge interface. And in this interface, I will bridge the interface uh, Ethernet one and the interface EOIP. As simple as that. So this is done from the client one. We go to client two. Client two, we have to bridge the uh, EOIP and the interface Ethernet two, which is connected to the LAN two. So we create a bridge and we have to bridge uh, Ethernet 2 and EOIP which is connected via the town. Excellent, very good. So now what we have uh, done at the end, of course we need to just justify if our work is correct now. So we have made uh, the bridging between from this side and uh, from the EOIP tunnel that we got and also EOIP tunnel here and uh, this interface over here. So at the end, we should have something like, uh, like you have to consider like a virtual big switch, meaning that those two devices, which are for the two customers, like two routers that we have here, they will be able to see each other on the layer two. Let's justify that. So let's go to the, um, we uh, try to ping, I think from LAN to, um, let's see, let's, yes, we try to ping to uh, LAN 1 router. Now, if we do the ping, here we go. You see, I'm able now to ping to 172.16.0.1, which is on the LAN uh, 1 router. And if we go to the IP neighbor, IP neighbors, so you can see, he can see it on his neighbor LAN 1 router. He can see it on layer 2. Excellent. So amazing. Yeah. So it's, uh, this is straightforward and you can see the MAC address and, and yeah, this is how you can do the configuration using, um, uh, PPPOE and uh, EOIP. So running EOIP over PPPOE, especially for your customers in your ISP, if you want to connect them together, uh, via the, uh, uh, the layer two, then yeah, you can do that. Now someone can say, but yeah, I do have a many routers inside my core network and not on, only one router. And I'm using also private IP addresses. Uh, so um, when I distribute the, the private IP addresses to my customer on the PPPoE, they can't see each other on the IP address. So what can I do? Then over here, you have to run some um, routing protocol inside your network where uh, you can reach all your IP addresses from any device inside your network, but also from the network of your customers uh, as for the uh, edge router. So the router that you are putting it for, for them. So you can uh, reach to that. And then the most important thing for your IP is that you need to have reachability between the IPs. So that is all what I wanted to show you in this lecture. I hope it was informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming lecture.